Bo is afraid and probably for good reason. Let's talk about Ari Aster's new film. This is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm here to talk to you about Bo is Afraid, the new film by Ari Aster. You might know him from his previous crazy works, Hereditary and Midsommar. This is his new weird, strange, horror-ish, dark comedy odyssey. And my hot take is, look, I think you should pass on it. Which really hurts because I, I like Ari Aster's work, even though I didn't love Hereditary as much. I think Bo is Afraid is my least favorite of his film, but there's so much that I do like about it. It is kind of tough to say. Uh, look, I love Midsommar a lot. Hereditary I liked up until the end. And Bo is Afraid, well, I liked a lot of things about it, but it is a strange, strange film. So overall, I think you should pass on it. Look, it's definitely unique, but it also is long, confusing, and has an ultimately unfulfilling film experience. There's a lot I really liked about it, but it is sadly my least favorite As Ari Aster film so far. So I'm going to tell you a little more about the film. A few things I liked, a few things I didn't like. Go into the story and the ending as much as I can. It is a strange film. I probably have to rewatch the movie again, really, to kind of get more out of it. But I don't really know if I want to because it's a three-hour experience and it is very strange. So uh, as you can imagine, there will be spoilers in the story slash ending section. If you don't want to know what happens in the film... You might not, because a, there are some big revelations, but it also is just a strange fever dream, so the spoilers might not actually matter that much, but you know what, if you don't want to know what happens in the film, I would turn it off when I get to the spoilers slash story section, but I'll let you know before that. Before, I'll keep it vague and spoiler-free, so you can keep watching up until then. So, in Bo is Afraid, you have the main character, Bo, who is afraid. Well, there you go, that's the whole review. No, Bo kind of lives his life in fear, and the big kind of odyssey... The conundrum in this movie is Bo is about to travel home to visit his mother. And then a lot of very weird things happen, but he is still determined to get home to visit his mother. And that leads to a very roundabout, very strange odyssey that has a host of very odd and quirky characters. So, things I liked about this movie. The first, look, it's funny. It's like a dark comedy, which I do very much enjoy. Um... But it is, it is a funny movie. There's a lot of really weird situations, a lot of very funny kind of moments. There's a lot of, like, plays on modern society and a lot of just kind of, like, out there situations. There's, there's a lot there's a lot of funny moments in this movie, which helps because it's a three-hour movie. You got to have a little bit of levity to kind of get you through. The second thing I love, look, I mean, I kind of loved and hated this. It's, it's very strange. It's a strange, strange movie. Look, it's an Ari Aster film. It's going to be strange. But this one is kind of dialed up. Like, some of his previous work, started off normal and then became stranger as the movie progressed this is just strange from the start and keeps going throughout um but you got a lot of odd situations some nice kind of like weird juxtapositions of things that are happening it is just an overall experience the third thing i loved is the music look there is some really good music there's some really well-placed music as well like you'll have some scenes where horrible things are happening around but you have this beautiful kind of relaxing calming music that i liked there's a lot of really nice playing with the music and playing with like the imagery on screen with the music that is happening and i was all about that the fourth thing i really loved is look there's some great performances i mean the kind of headliner is walking phoenix he has a fantastic job as Bo. he has a strange character that he has to portray a kind of like person who's afraid of the world and afraid of everything and I think he, you know, he does that very well. And pretty much everyone in the cast really kind of buys all in. Like everyone is fully behind their characters. All the characters are very quirky, very out there, and they do some really crazy things. And everyone kind of goes all in on the performances. And look, the last thing I loved is the world building. There is an entire world that Ariaster creates in this film, even including like alternate like bands and things like that. Like uh, there's a room that we end up in that has is, is plastered with all these different bands and like teen stars i think they're pretty much all made up i think they're all like either riffs on things or just like funny made up versions of like a 90s room and i really like that like it really went all in the uh the, the world feels very realized even though it's very very strange so all that being said things i didn't like about this movie well the first is like wtf it is a weird weird movie 
It does not really explain much, especially at the start. Uh, there's a lot going on, and you kind of have to jump to some conclusions, I think. Like, I don't really completely understand the movie. I think I have some things that I will talk about in the story slash ending section, but just, no, it is a very, very weird movie. Second thing I love, like, seriously, WTF. Like, it is a very, very weird movie. There are, there's, like, essentially four main kind of sections. Uh, five. There's five. Five main sections of the movie. And each one is very strange, very out there. Um, it is, again, just a very odd overall experience. But the thing I didn't love as much, look, it's quite long. Like, it is a very, very long movie. Sometimes it's pretty slow in some of the things that it's doing. And it feels like it. Like, I was kind of... There, there was a lot of moments where I was just enjoying it, but there were a lot of times I was kind of just looking at my watch wondering what would happen next and the last thing i didn't love as much and this is one of the things that hurt me in hereditary i didn't love the ending that much i thought it was kind of uh, a little bit too out there it just kind of jumped a little bit too much um i didn't really give you an overall satisfying conclusion so all that being said i think you should probably pass on it but you know if you like Ari Aster's work maybe you'll get something out of this movie maybe you will enjoy it more than i did Probably you'll enjoy it more than I did. So that is Bo is Afraid. It's coming to theaters on April 21st, 2023. And um, I'm going to get into the story and the ending section. So if you don't want to know what happens in this movie, and like I said, you might not. I would turn it off now. So like I said, in Bo is Afraid, you have Bo who is afraid. He's very afraid. He's afraid of everything. Um, he's living in this kind of apartment in, I, I think, New York. And... It is interesting because like everything around him is terrible. Like not like it's there's there's commotion. There's like violence outside. There it's like crowded. The apartment is like run down. Bo is living in this tiny space that like half the time doesn't work. When he's walking into his apartment, there's apparently a sign for like there's a recluse spider on the loose, and that's just how it starts. And it gets weirder from there. So so pretty much the main like conundrum that Bo is in is he is going back to travel to visit his mom. I guess it's the anniversary of his dad's death and he's going back to visit his mom. We don't know much else about this, but he has a plane ticket. He's getting ready to go. He has some anxiety. He's talking to his therapist about it. He gets ready to go. He, you know, does his work. He gets a good night's sleep. But then that night, there is some weird occurrences that happen. Someone keeps slipping a note under his door saying like, please turn your music down. And he's not playing any music. His apartment is perfectly quiet. It happens a few times. And then, like, on the third time, uh, I guess someone's music starts playing loud. And Bo is, like, covering his ears. Unfortunately, that means he sleeps through his alarm. His alarm goes off. He doesn't wake up. He wakes up about two hours before his flight. And if you've traveled recently, that is not enough time to get to your flight and be on time. He throws everything together. Tries to get to the airport. Now he's about to leave. He... Forgets something, goes back into the apartment, grabs it, and when he comes back, his keys and luggage are gone. So during this time, he also has a new prescription of some sort of, I assume, anxiety medication that he always has to take with water. He takes it the first time with a bottle of water, but unfortunately, when he takes it the second time, after he misses his flight, he takes some medication. He doesn't have any water. His water bottle is empty. The water in his apartment is not working. He is very, very concerned. And he also doesn't have keys, so he can't, like, leave and lock his apartment. So he gets downstairs, he props open the door to the apartment, runs across to, a, like, a bodega, grabs a water bottle, pays for it, his credit card is declined. He's paying in cash, and it's very slow because he has, like, $1.50, and it's $1.79, so he's trying to, like, find additional uh, change to pay for it. He finally ends up paying for it, but while he's doing this, all the commotion from outside goes into his apartment like they find the door open and there's like unhoused people there are some crazy people. like there is literally someone being killed outside of his apartment in this like wild conundrum of a place um there's some people dancing there's some people like uh chasing each other there is someone that seems to try to assault Bo every time he goes outside all those people go into his apartment while he is here trying to pay for this water so Bo is very upset about this he runs back Unfortunately, the apartment closes. So he can't get into the apartment. He sees 
just these people ransacking his place. And he decides to just like try to get up close. He gets up close to his apartment and then falls asleep on like some scaffolding for some work. The next day he wakes up and goes into his apartment. It is destroyed. But he also then tries to call his mom to figure out what to do. He's like trying to figure out if he should go home or stay there. He doesn't really know. He doesn't have keys. He doesn't have luggage. His credit card's getting declined. He doesn't really know what to do. So he calls his mom. She doesn't pick up. So he calls again. And a UPS person picks up and the UPS person starts questioning, like, whose phone is this? And Bo's like, I, it's, I called my mom's number. And so come, what we come to realize is that Bo's mom was killed. She, there was a chandelier that fell on her. She is dead in her house. And the UPS person was delivering a package, saw the door open, smelled something, came inside, found his mom dead, called the police. But then when Bo called, he picked it up to try to figure out what was going on. So... After Bo finds out his mom is dead, he tries to take a bath, just to kind of relax. And while he's there, the something like drips on him. And they're like, okay, that's weird. Like, is there water in the ceiling? He looks up and there is a person, like Mission Impossible style, on his roof, staying up there and like very stressed. I mean, he's he's suspending himself by his hands and feet against the walls. So He's clearly like straining, but then also he seems stressed for other reasons. There's sweat dripping on him, uh, on the bow. And then we see like that recluse spider that you heard about earlier climb across his face. And that is too much for this person that is up in the, in the, like the roof. He falls down into the bathtub with Bo. They kind of hustle for a little bit. It looks kind of like a fight, but it doesn't, I don't actually think it's a fight. I think they are just trying to like figure out what to do and they're both kind of freaking out so they kind of go around around the bathtub eventually Bo finally gets out he is naked he runs into the street like completely confused and unfortunately for him in the street there is more violence so there is uh someone who has been running around called like the birthday suit stabber he runs around naked and like stabs people he's out there not good for Bo so Bo runs from him runs right into a cop but the cop sees this crazy naked person holding something like a, uh, a a statue that he was going to give his mom, but he's holding it. The cop freaks out, thinks he has a weapon, tells him to, tells him to stop moving, tells him to stop moving. Bo's not moving, but the cop is freaking out. So Bo decides this is not for him. And he turns around and runs, runs right into the path of a car that hits him. That is the first act. Now we're into the second act. The second act is... Bo wakes up in this house and he's in like a kid's room, like a, like a nineties kid's room, like a teenager's room, plastered with posters in someone's bed. And he's like hooked up to like hospital stuff, but he's in someone's house. But we find out that he is in the house of Grace and Roger. Roger is a surgeon. Grace is actually, we find out a little bit later that she is a CEO of a company. Like she is definitely playing the homemaker for most of this, but we find out later that she is like a big deal at her company uh, and so they are a power couple. Now they're taking care of Bo. They hit him with their with their car, and they are patching him back up. He actually got stabbed by the stabber guy. He got stabbed in his hand. Luckily for him, Roger's a surgeon, so he cleaned up his wounds, patched him up. They give him some very nice gray pajamas that you see in the poster, and they tell him that you know you have to rest up. So we find out more about their family. They have a daughter who. This room Bo is staying in, and she is not very happy about this. And they had a son who died serving in the army. He was a paratrooper. He died. They treat his room like a shrine. No one goes into his room. And this is causing some friction because the daughter's like, we have a perfectly good room. Why is he in my room? And they don't seem to want to listen to her. So this is a strange overall setup. Bo is there for a little bit, but they also have another visitor. I think his name was Ivan. I don't remember. He was in their son's uh, unit, I believe, and and they he uh, kind of went crazy during the war or during his service, and now he is staying with them and just like he is all over the place. He has like mood swings. He is outside sometimes. He does some very strange things. He seems like a loose cannon, but he's part of this weird family as well. So while Bo is staying here. He calls like his lawyer or his mother's lawyer who says that he needs to get to their house. They are like his mother expressly said that he needs to be there during the funeral. And so um, he's not there, 
So they have not buried her body. They're like waiting to bury her body until he gets there. And he's like, I, I can't get there. Like I'm injured. And like, you have to get here. This causes Bo some distress. And so he starts freaking out and says like, I need to get there. I need to get to um, my mom's house. I need to go there now. Well, Grace and Roger are trying to make it work, but stuff keeps coming up. Like uh, Grace has an important meeting and Roger uh, was going to take Bo, but then some surgeries happened. So he is not sure he can take him uh, for a couple days because he moved surgeries over to take him an earlier day, but then something came up. Bo seems like he'll be there for a long time. And it also seems like Tony doesn't really like him. It seems like Tony, their daughter, is kind of seeding some bad situations. She so eventually, Tony gets Bo to, like, follow her, and the, she wants to, like, repaint the bedroom. She wants to repaint her, her brother's bedroom, who has, he died earlier. They have not touched his bedroom. She is sick of it, so she wants to repaint the bedroom, and I think she's also upset that they're, like, treating Bo like their own kid and probably treating her him better than they treat her. So she has two things of paint. She's like, we're going to repaint this bedroom and she starts like splashing paint on the walls Bo doesn't want to do this because a he doesn't want to upset his host and also he probably thinks it's wrong she uh tony gets upset about this and eventually she you know is about to splash some paint and then she's like she starts drinking some paint so as you can imagine drinking paint is not good for her she drinks the paint and then like collapses and that is when grace runs in and she sees her her daughter like on the floor covered in paint and Bo was like trying to stop her he's got paint on her and she thinks okay this is not good and Grace thinks that Bo hurt Tony so Grace starts to like do CPR trying to revive her Tony's clearly already gone like she is not moving her eyes are open there's like hot blood vessels in her eyes not good for Bo so Grace seems to blame him and she sicks David the uh, military person on Bo Bo is having none of this. He runs out and just runs away from this whole situation. He runs into the forest, runs, 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 runs. Boom, hits his head on a tree, passes out. That's act two. Now we're in act three. And there's no like act numbers, but this is just kind of like logically how I'm thinking about it. So act three takes place in a forest. Bo wakes up. He is not sure what is going on. There is, uh, he's, it's in the dark. He hears someone and sees someone's flashlight and we meet a very nice, pregnant lady who is walking through the forest uh he's like i'm lost she takes him to her like group and they are this like traveling performing troupe that go around and perform plays now they kind of it's very makeshift they have like tents they kind of set everything up in the forest do their performances and then move on they call themselves the orphans of the forest and this is a fun one because like people are some people are like in costume some people aren't you got like a chicken walking around you get like a jester walking around everyone is involved in this like playwright troupe and Bo is now part of it and they also seem to like to get their participants involved as well so eventually they prepare this play and it's kind of a fun like play Bo is sitting in the audience it starts off very bad like very kind of overly dramatic very you know intentionally bad but then, but then Bo kind of like transposes himself into the play. Like in he then becomes part of the play. And the play becomes, I guess, kind of about his life or maybe about the life he could have had because it's this very strange journey where Bo like wanders. He finds a village. At, in this village, he finds someone for him. They kind of have a relationship. They have three kids. And then at some point, this like flood washes away uh the village and separates Bo from his kids and so Bo is now like spending the rest of the time wandering the earth trying to find the kids he is no longer in his village he can't use his trade that he had learned that was sustaining him and so now he's just this like wandering person looking for his family so I think this whole like play is kind of loosely based on either Bo's life or like Bo's potential life I think so eventually the, the the play says like he will search for his family and he'll collapse and when that happens the narrator like asks him like why he's why he's crying uh, Bo says like i've searched for my family all my life and he's still alone and the narrator is like you shouldn't be crying for your own misfortunes your own sins like while you were searching for them you were also being searched for but you were so lost in your own selfishness that they could never find you so this is like 
there's a few references to like Bo being like a selfish child, um, someone that only cares for himself. This is one of them. Eventually, the narrator says, like, confess before your peers. And so Bo confesses that he's a coward. And then in this play, it's still all part of this play that allows him to then go back home and find his home. But it's been so long because he's been wandering looking for his family that no one in his village recognizes him. And it gets very meta because he, like, wanders into his village. He has one dollar left to his name, and there's two options. There's a play that was being put on that night or some food. And Bo's character chooses the play. He goes into the play, and we're taken to, like, an auditorium. Much like the auditorium that Bo is in in the, I guess, real world. But this is his, like, play world. And in the play are his three sons in the play. Like, in, in this fake world of this play where he, like, found this village, found someone, had some children, and then everything was washed away. His three sons are there, and they are performing a play about Bo. And so Bo, in this world, like says that he's that he's their father they all come and embrace him so then after Bo like is reunited with his sons in this like play world we get some more information about Bo's real life and we find out that Bo's father died very early in the relationship uh, apparently on the wedding night of Bo and Bo's of Bo's father and Bo's mother he had a heart murmur that is apparently a genetic condition that goes all the way back to Bo's like great-grandfather and so when Bo's father and his wife were consummating the marriage, after they were over, Bo's father had a heart attack. And so, but the result of that was Bo was born. But Bo also apparently has this heart murmur. And so he can also never have sex or else he will have a heart attack and die. And apparently his Bo's grandfather died the same way and his great-grandfather died the same way. So it's like a single-shot weapon one shot and they're done. So then it kind of bleeds back into the play and Bo in the play tells his kids like that he's never been with anyone and the son's looking like, wait, then how are we conceived? And then the play pulls back and you see that Bo is standing in, I guess, the real world with a different play being shown and that was all in his head. And the play that is being shown in the real world is still the same kind of play. But then David, the person who was hunting for Bo, kills one of the performers and then starts destroying, like he starts shooting up the this orphans of the forest village and Bo runs. And while Bo's running, the army guy David gets like hit by one of the performers. He ends up shooting himself, but before he dies or before he at least passes out, he uses like an app to incapacitate Bo. There's like an ankle bracelet that Bo was wearing to monitor his health that the Grace and Roger family put on him. Well, apparently that also like tracked him and then gives them the ability to incapacitate. So the David character incapacitates Bo. Bo collapses. Uh, but he's already run a little bit far away. So that is act three. Now, when this happens, we also get kind of a vision of Bo's growing up and it is someone in the bath which we presume is Bo and he sees his mother who is trying to like get the clothes off of this other child to like, presumably give him a bath and that child is like fighting and then that child says like where's daddy and his mother's like you know where daddy is daddy's dead um but apparently the kid keeps asking my mom looks at the bathtub child and says like do you want to know where daddy is and that bathtub child shakes its head and the mom like turns to this other kid who's misbehaving and says you want daddy and sends him up to the attic. And so she sends him up into the attic and then she closes the attic and says like, we don't talk about you anymore. And that's another weird flashback that we get. Well, now Bo wakes up in the forest. This is act four. He goes to the forest, hitches a ride, hitches a ride to his mother's house. And we get to his mother's house and it is this beautiful, beautiful, like amazing house. His mother was a big deal. She was a CEO of this company. But Bo apparently gets there too late because the funeral has already happened. They were going to wait for him, but the funeral's already happened. It's getting packed up. Bo walks in, kind of observes the house, observes the funeral, the kind of casket viewing. There is a, like, the, the there's a playback of the actual funeral video that happens during this time. And then Bo looks 
over this like timeline of things that were happening with the company that his mother made. And it seems like Bo is in a lot of the images here. A lot of the ads here and some of the, the drugs that are being tested appear to be like, maybe they were tested on Bo. Maybe he was just an early adopter of them. But he figures prominently throughout this. And we also see at the very end, this like big picture of his mother that is made up of other pictures. And I presume these are pictures of like his her employees, the employees of this company. Uh, and when Bo looks at them, he recognizes a few of them. Uh, some of them look like, I think, some of the people that we have seen earlier, like the people that are outside of his apartment. But in any event, he recognizes someone. And we also, during this time, see a, a picture of like his apartment, specifically the apartment that he was living in. And it looks very nice. This could be concept art or it could be something else. We don't really know, but the apartment itself looks very nice, very, very well taken care of. So Bo then passes out in his mother's house. Well, I guess now it's his house because his mother's dead. And he wakes up and someone has come to the house and she's like saying hello. She's like confused. She apparently thought the part, the funeral started at 8 p.m., but it actually started at 8 a.m. So she is horribly late. Um, Bo recognizes her as his childhood friend, Elaine, which they met on this one cruise uh, many, many years ago. She took a liking to him. They kind of hung out a lot. They played together. Um, they, I, I think she was his first kiss. And then she like disappeared. She was like taken from the cruise ship. But before she left, she gave him a picture of her and said, like, wait for me, uh, you know, promise to wait for me. So apparently Bo has been waiting for her. Also, because if he has sex, he's going to die. So that doesn't really bow ball for him but he has been waiting for her and now here she is so as she's leaving like she it's very awkward she like talks to him he doesn't really say much and as she's leaving he like says elaine and they recognize each other they connect uh he says that he waited for her she said why he's like well you you told me to you i have it in writing and i think she thinks this is sweet they end up going back into the house. They go up into the bedroom, Bo's mom's bedroom, but she's dead, right? So no big deal. They turn on some, in, or Elaine turns on some music, which and I think it's Tom's Diner by Susan Vega. It is horribly out of place in this situation. And it was perfect for this overall situation. Uh, Bo and Elaine end up having sex. And Bo is like very concerned about this. He's like, he's very curious, but he also thinks he's going to die. So like, as it's happening, he is happy and then he like starts getting scared and he starts going like no 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 like he starts freaking out uh elaine doesn't stop she is in the throes of the moment eventually Bo finishes and he doesn't die so he's very happy um elaine keeps going and eventually kind of like he i think he kind of finishes again and he's not dead he's very happy he's like telling her how happy he is and he looks up and elaine is dead so i, I guess she had the heart condition or something i don't know he like freaks out throws her off she like falls on the ground and she's like she's like stiff as a board she's already like i guess i don't know she's a statue apparently um and then Bo like scrambles across the bed and like hides and that is when Bo's mother appears she kind of looks at him in disgust grabs the sheets and and then this is when Bo drops that he knew his mother wasn't dead. And she's like, how? Well, apparently there was someone named Martha that we'd met earlier um, during one of the like Bo cruise scenes. Uh, Martha was apparently a like loyal, I don't know, companion, housekeeper. I'm not exactly sure what she is, but she was loyal to Bo's mother uh, for many, many years. And Bo recognized that the corpse at the viewing had like a birthmark on her hand and her mother didn't, his mother didn't have that. So he knew it was Martha. Martha apparently volunteered to be the one that, that had that chandelier fall on her in order in exchange for a very, very large payment to like her entire family. Uh, Bo's mother says like her family will never have to work again because of this. And apparently this whole thing was set up as a test to get Bo back. Bo had, I guess had not come back a lot for a while. So his mother staged this whole thing to get Bo back. And then his mother starts ranting about like how she was never loved by Bo. Like she gave everything to Bo and uh, he was a selfish child. And then she asks, like, you know, do you want the truth? And Bo's like, yes, I, you know, I, I want the truth. So she sends him up to the attic. When Bo's going up there, 
his mother's like i'll be right behind you when he gets up there she says like those were memories that you had of talking about his like vision of seeing the kid going up in the attic and then when he gets up in the attic he looks and he sees i guess his brother who is in the same shirt that he was in when he was sent up to the attic years and years ago chained to a wall looking not great and then he scans over and we see a giant penis monster that is in the corner it is basically just a ball sack and a penis it is yelling i guess that's his father apparently and then david the person that was hunting him like breaks through the window of the attic sees the monster goes and starts like attacking it like stabbing it shooting it and the monster just like has this like tendril claw thing right into david's head david's dead this thing is like yelling. It also yells like son, son. So I guess it's supposed to be his father. Bo's terrified, as you would be. He falls out of the attic. He like falls back down the stairs. Doesn't want to go back up in there. So he is like scared. He is apologizing to his mother. He's like groveling at her feet. And his mother keeps laying into him, keeps saying like how she's given her whole life to him, how she's he squeezed everything out of her. And eventually she says that like she's grown to hate him. And she's like, yes, I hate you. And that causes Bo to snap. Then Bo's just starts strangling her. He strangles her for a bit. And then when he releases, he like is horrified with himself. His mother still seems to be alive because she like takes a gasp, turns around, takes a step and then collapses into like a glass table or terrarium or something. So presumably Bo killed her um, from this. Bo's horrified. He leaves the house, um, gets to some sort of lake that is there apparently, jumps in a boat and starts boating away, going away. The boat leads him to a cave. He goes to this cave. It is this interesting kind of overall setup. And then after he's through the cave, he ends up in this like stadium and he's surrounded by people. And that is when his, like the boat stops. It like putters, putter, putters, but it doesn't move anywhere. And he's kind of trapped in the middle of the stadium. And there is one person who is like, I guess the prosecution who is talking about how terrible Bo is. And there's a defense who is kind of being drowned out, doesn't really say much. Um, the prosecution goes into things from Bo's life about showing how he's a selfish child. His mother is right next to him, so clearly his mother is, I guess, bringing the case or controlling the case. And the prosecution goes into all the terrible things that Bo has done. Just little things that it twists to like show how bad he is. It's kind of like in Chrono Trigger. If you play Chrono Trigger, there's a trial there where everything you do, like no matter what you do, it is it is seen in a negative light. That's kind of what this is like. So as they're going through all the terrible things that Bo has done, the terrible, like not actually terrible, but terrible in this context things, uh, his mother is like gripping this like bar and eventually she like is so upset that the bar, the bar breaks, it falls in the water. And that's when Bo realizes that like his leg, his feet are glued to this boat and he can't move. And that's when the engine also starts to kind of like light on fire i guess it seems to be starting to be damaged it breaks there's like fire coming out of it they're like the trial is swelling Bo asks for help for like the various people like gathered around watching in this like coliseum type stadium no one helps him and Bo seems to be resigned to his fate at this point so he just kind of like now he stands there as the um engine gets worse and worse it starts like having more flames and then the boat that he's in violently flips over and so now Bo's legs are like glued to the boat. He can't escape. And so the boat like is kind of like rocking as Bo is underneath the water suffocating. And as this happens, we start seeing people leaving the Coliseum. The, the boat is like shaking a little bit and then it stops. There's no music. And then that's when we see the credits. There's no music during the credits. As it's happening, people start to like leave the stadium until eventually the stadium is empty as the credits are going on and all you see is this like upside down boat in this water and this empty stadium. So that is Bo is Afraid. What was Bo afraid of? Well, I don't know. I think the movie touches on like mental health, um, on abuse, um, like on expectations and especially family expectations and things like that. Uh, maybe like suppression as well because Bo seems to be a very kind of like 
introverted character. He is afraid of everything, but he doesn't. Well, there's a lot of scenes where he like doesn't outwardly say much. So I think a lot of this was in his head. I think like the the picture of his apartment in his mother's house, and it looked beautiful. It looked like brand new and wonderful. Versus what we saw at the start of the film, I think that was maybe Bo's own anxiety, like putting a negative spin on everything around him. So maybe all the craziness around him was maybe like normal New York life, but he put like a negative, overly chaotic spin on it, caused like a, a happy street to turn into this like nightmare world where people were dying, things like that. Uh, and I think it probably just built from there. Uh, perhaps the kind of play that he saw when it was like really in his head, it's probably really all in his head. Um, I don't know what the mother being alive, faking her own death and the penis monster were, but perhaps that was also in his head. Maybe that's how he was justifying like what happened. And his trial, I don't know, maybe that's him retreating into his own mind. Maybe that's what that like tunnel is, is like him like retreating into his own mind and like, being extra hard on himself. I don't know, but that is the film. That is Bo is Afraid. It comes to theaters on April 21st, 2023. You can check it out if you want to. Look, I I gave it a pass, which makes me very sad because there's a lot to like about this film. I do like Ari Aster's work. I love Midsummer. Hereditary had its moments. I just didn't like the ending. Bo is Afraid, I think, is my least favorite of his movies. But look, I will see the next one that he does. It's always interesting. And uh, thanks so much for watching. If you like this review, Please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.